Hello and welcome to the Gauntlet of Greatness. I'm Randy Bueller, joined by Shadow Detella, my normal partner in crime. How are things, Shadow? Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. We are in Group A this week. So Necro and Tinker got the first week wins when we kicked off this season of Gauntlet of Greatness. Sly and Rebels were the losers in that first week. So the way this is going to work, the 1-0 and o decks are going to play each other. The 0-1 and o decks are going to play each other. And then... O2 is relegated out of the next season. 2-0 advances to the playoffs, and then the 1-1 one one decks will play off against each other for the second playoff berth out of this tournament. Recall that the big picture tournament here is 16 decks, right? It's four groups of four, and then the top two groups from each deck will go to the playoffs. The decks are chosen to be 16 of the best decks in the history of Standard. The winning deck will join Memory Jar and Talarian Academy in the Hall of Fame. The losing decks, uh, the O2 decks, will get relegated. We'll get some move fresh blood in, set it up, run it back again at some point in the future. So that brings us to Sly versus Rebels. And uh, if you turn into the live stream of the Gauntlet of Greatness every week, Shadow and I usually do a practice match and, uh, you know, do a little bit of trash talking on, uh, on the stream on Twitch before we finish, before we make the actual video. And it turns out in this case, we both thought we had the better deck. I was thinking about this from the slide deck's perspective. And this, this version of the slide deck, this is really Dead Guy Red, right? This is Post Tempest. This is Jackal Pops and Curse Scrolls. This is Wasteland. This is sort of the most beat down version of the red deck from the 90s. This deck put, uh, you know, Ben Rubin finished second at Worlds. John Finkel made top eight with this deck at Worlds. I think Pakula made, well, this was the deck he was playing. He also made that top eight. Dave Price won a Pro Tour with this deck. So for me, this is Dead Guy Red. This is sort of the best of the sort of 90s beatdown creature decks. But I just said 90s creature decks. So at the end of the day, like, you're still playing stuff like Ironclaw Orcs. Like 1R, 2-2 with a drawback. Still makes the cut at this point in time. I think about this matchup, though, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I can kill a Searchers with Incinerates and Shocks and Mog Fanatics, right? I can kill a Sergeant. I can kill a, a Falcon. I can kill Lin Sivy. I can attack his lands with Wasteland and then just burn him out. So I think that Sly has got a decent shot here. Shadow, though, with the Rebel deck, is just thinking about, okay, this Rebel deck has so many Searchers. Like, every creature in this deck can go get all the other creatures. So if those ever live, then it's just this never-ending string of card advantage, and that, that red deck is capable of dealing a lot of burn with Fire Blast and Ball Lightning, but realistically, it's got to actually deal some damage with creatures before it's going to burn you out. And you've even got a Thermal Glider hanging out in the main deck of this with protection from red. I mean, Cursed Scroll can kill it, but that's it. And then meanwhile, you know, Chimeric Idol is at 3-3. Three, three, there's, there's no Lightning Bolts. It's just Incinerate in terms of dealing 3 damage. And oh, by the way, Parallax Wave is also amazingly powerful in the creature-on-creature -creature matchup. So, I don't know. Shadow, you think you got the edge here with Rebels? I still think that Rebels has the edge here. Which I... is unfortunate, because really, I also want to see Rebels out. Like, I want to see both these decks out. <laughs> <laughs> you want them both to get relegated? I want them both gone. They're just not... They're not up to par with everything else that we've got going on. The Rebels deck made the playoffs last year. Yeah, mistakes were made. Mistakes, mistakes were, made. were made. Okay. All right. Well, they're not both going to get relegated. All right. I have set up a match. Uh, constructed getting serious with 60-minute clock, so hopefully we don't have to worry about time. Come join me. Let's fight. Let us fight. Constructed open getting serious format okay. free the form. 60-minute clock. 60 minute clock and then hit refresh because it hates me. All right. I downgraded the rebel seating. I mean, they made the playoffs, but I didn't give them a two seed. I gave them a three seed. No, I gave them a four seed. I gave Sly the three seed. All right. You're in tournament practice, by the way. So you're just full of lies. I'm full of lies. I'm in the tournament practice room. Okay. Oh, right. It's because I went in to observe a game to make sure that my screen was set up well for seeing all the information. Okay. You found me, though? I found you. I found my Rebel stack list. I'm hitting play. I'm hitting mute. I'll talk to you later. All right. Yeah, we'll talk more after the match. All right. He won the die roll. Probably bad for me. But let's see what happens. The draw looks good, right? Well, I mean, I wish I had a Jackal Pup or even an Ironclaw Orc, but I'm going to keep it. 
Like this card seems really, if I can get, if I can start recursing Hammer of Ogre Dan, I've only got a couple of these and it takes five mana to regrow it, but I'm starting with four mountains and a hammer. That feels pretty good to me in this matchup. Curse Scroll is also a recursive source of damage in this matchup. Um, again, if I have a bunch of, of lands. They don't play great with the Fire Blast, but in theory, Fire Blast is just your finisher. Okay, he goes Sergeant Sergeant, which means he's probably going to get to activate one of them next turn, which is less than ideal for me. So, yeah, maybe with Curse Scroll I can catch up. Yeah, being on the draw is bad, right? If I could hammer one of these guys before he could activate it, that would be a lot better. But now his searchers are going to live. I didn't draw Shock, Fanatic, or Incinerate. Wow. I'll totally trade. He's going to play Lin City is why he's probably doing this. But that's... Trade helps me catch up quite a bit. Okay, so I, yeah, it's got to be Hammered Lin City. I don't think I can afford to Fire Blast. Like, part of me is tempted to Fire Blast just to make sure it doesn't have a, a Searcher. But Fire Blasting a Sarkin is pretty lame when you can follow up with a Lin City. Now, Fire Blasting Lin City is something I'm going to have to think about. She's great. Oh, jeez. Interesting. I think I just ball lightning, right? If I get to hit him with two ball lightnings, we can start to get into fire blast, fire blast range. And obviously I want to turn this curse scroll on as well. Like a lot of the creatures that he's going to get are tutus, right? Thermal glider I can kill with curse scroll. A lot of his creatures died of curse scroll. You can eventually kill one city with a hammer. Interesting. I feel like I'm playing this two different ways, but I mean, this is what my draw says to do. If he, if he opens up a window where I can just burn him out with ball lightning and fire blast, then great. If this becomes a game where I'm getting back Hammer Broker Dan, well, that's okay, too. Well, this is going to let me hit him with Fire Blast again. Yeah, yeah. Lin City's going to be able to go get a Sergeant. That doesn't deal with my Fire Blast. That's a nice draw. All right. Fifth land turns on Hammer of Broker Dan. There's nothing, there's no first striking guys he can go get to deal with the ball lightning. He thinking about chunk blocking? He, wow, he just wants to soak up the damage. Whoa! He is worried enough about damage that he's going to throw Lin Civi in front of Ball Lightning. I mean, it probably means he has another Lin Civi in his hand, or it means that he's going to be able, feels like, feels confident in his ability to search his way up to Lin Civi. Either of which is fine with me. Or if he's got another Lin City, I'm now at the point where I can get my hammer back. I mean, if it was just one Remosian Sergeant, then I would fanatic it for sure. But it's two Sergeants, so fanatic doesn't actually do me any good. Right, he does have the third Lin City. So his line of play, he's forced it into this grindy mid-game game, which is what he wanted to do, I would think. <laughs> Wish I could stack damage here. I mean, on the one hand, yes, it would be great if I could stack damage and Monk Fanatic got worse when damage came off the stack, but here's the thing nobody talks about. Damage didn't use the stack when Monk Fanatic was printed either, right? When Monk Fanatic was printed, it worked exactly like this. You block and then you sack and kill the other guy. 
So, sure, damage leaving the stack made Mog Fanatic worse, but damage starting to use the stack in 6th edition made it better. Interesting. So now, in my upkeep, I can... I can spend all of my mana returning a hammer, or I can curse scroll Ramosian Sergeant. I can actually do both, right? He's got two cards left, so I can... No, I can't do both. That is, I can recurse the hammer and fire blast one civvy, but not also curse scroll the sergeant. The hammer will let me kill one civvy next turn. I feel like hammer kills everything in his deck. Like, what goes wrong if I let one civvy live for a turn? He gets card advantage on me, but I have damn close to infinite card advantage. Oh, now I can kill two things next turn without even uh, having to use Curse Scroll. Yeah, I think I let him... I think I let him activate Lin Civi once because I feel like I can catch up. Eh, Parallax Way is annoying. He can save his Lin Civi. But I can wait that out too. Well, I do want to force him, or I could damage him. How much burn do I have in my hand? I have three, six, seven, eight. I have 12 burn in my hand. Oh yeah. I think it's time to hit him. If it wasn't for Parallax Wave, I could realistically just kill all of his creatures. But Parallax Wave means he's gonna get these creatures back. We spent a lot of time doing this dance. And like I've now accumulated enough burn that I'm one curse scroll activation from being able to just kill him. Yep, new player. I don't think he can't he can't build an army quickly enough to deal fifteen. I don't think. I mean, killing creatures with a slide deck is actually a very normal part of the strategy. But there's a point, right, where you have to decide which way you're going to go. Turns out, I drew burn. So we have a new plan. So seven. Right. So do I just auto kill him in my upkeep? Is that how this works? I don't want to accidentally draw a card and screw up my curse scroll. Yeah, two, two, and four. No life gain in his deck. Fire Blast is the card I'm going to name. GG. Cool. I don't think I have anything to sideboard here. Also, it's not like not like my cards are bad. Goblin Vandal's kind of mediocre. Oh, Firestorm could be good. Firestorm actually lets me recover from him having a bunch of rebels out, and potentially gives me the ability to brain him for decent damage. I mean, Thaumaturgist can turn Lin Sivy into a one three. If she was O three, sure, I'd be bringing in the Thaumaturgist, turning her into. A 3-0 and thus dead. That's what you did with these cards back in the day, is you could kill their Wall of Blossoms, you could kill their Wall of Roots. What do I cut? The Vandal? Never, ever, ever. The only artifacts he has are the Chimeric Idols, and if he has a Chimeric Idol, he can block a Goblin Vandal, so... It's basically a Vanilla 1-1. One -one. Could Dwarven Miner? He's got Rashad Ports. And he's got Brushlands. And he's super mana hungry. I think that's probably better than Goblin Vandal. It's not great. I mean, it's expensive and not really where I want the game to go. Yeah, I'll start with this. 
Final Fortune was in the sideboard for when you just felt like gambling. I don't know. Final Fortune never made a lot of sense to me. It's just like sometimes they're about to take control of the game and you just need another turn basically to attack with your creatures. So like if they're... You would bring it in against combo decks because I think you're just like creature, creature, creature and they're like waiting to go off and kill you with Cadaver's Bloom or whatever. And uh, you get the surprise like... I can deal a bunch of extra damage you weren't counting on. You missed time of the race. Or like a Wrath of God deck you could sometimes catch. Like they take damage, and now they're set up to sort of sweep the board and take control of the game, but you give them, you have the surprise turn. I never thought it was all that good, honestly. I don't think I can mulligan this draw. Yeah, this draw seems fine. It's not spectacular. Like... I don't have ball lightnings or fire blasts, but I had multiple ways to kill a sergeant, which is kind of nice. And if I don't kill a sergeant, then I get to play turn one jackal pup. So that seems good too. What I can't kill with this hand is one civvy. Yes, first strike. First strike is good against me for sure. Yeah, this guy, not a rebel. Human Soldier Archer. It wasn't it was not like any creature type change to happen or anything. It was just WW for 2 2 First Strike was relevant enough that it made the cut as the non rebel on the deck. Yeah, I have to clear a path, right? This shock effectively deals two damage to him in addition to killing his creature by clearing a path for my Jackal Pup. So that's the way this works. I like it. Chat has suggested that Final Fortune is in the sideboard. Best used when you're down 0-1 against an unwinnable matchup to you can lose on your own terms. Sounds about right. <laughs> Does have the Lin City. Sad. Ah, we got there. That was a great draw. Not only does it kill Lin City, but I'm already at four lands, so this is another game where I can realistically recurse the Hammer Bogart in. I mean, those people who think this is just a beatdown deck, like, this happens. Like, you recurse Hammer Bogardan, especially in the mirror. In the mirror, you wind up just killing each other's creatures all the time, and so the game is decided by these sources of random sources of card advantage, like the hammer. Thermal Glider needs another solution, though. I can't kill Thermal Glider without a uh, without a curse scroll. So I don't think it makes any sense to go flailing in with a Sandstalker. The thing is, though, if he has no Searcher, like, I killed Lin Civi, and he followed up, I mean, look, him naturally drawing the Glider is obviously not good for me, but if this game goes long, I'm going to win with Hammer Recursion. And also, like, I'm set up next turn where I can actually throw away Sandstalk, sand, throw Sandstalker into Glider in exchange for five damage. That is not a small amount of damage. Yeah, well, he's thinking he's got two ports, but I think he's too far behind. Maybe he's just going to tap my lands. It doesn't do a whole lot here. Yeah. Hmm. So I can trade Sandstalker for five damage. I think I like that. Because if I trade Sandstalker for 5 damage, next turn I want to spend all my mana getting the hammer back. Because he's got me under no pressure whatsoever. Yeah, swing. He has no life gain in his deck, too. That's the other thing that makes this matchup kind of nice. Like, these 5, these are... There's actual zero life gain in his deck. So obviously he blocks the 4-2. Takes 5.
Magina the Lion! Wow! You can discard two cards to kill everybody except Magida. Hilarious. Oh, I went through my upkeep. I didn't have a stop set in time. So I don't get the hammer back, seriously. I've been taking that stop on and off. That's annoying. So now if I attack, I get through with the Mog Fanatic. It effectively deals one damage. Dope. Hmm. I could have wastelanded a port to shut off Megita. I wasn't really even thinking about Megita. Mostly I'm just disappointed that I forgot to get my hammer back. But whatever, this game's going to play fine. Like if that's what he's going to spend his time doing, we're going to win. Yeah, it's five mana, and you can only get this back during your upkeep. Is the problem? I just I didn't I don't normally have a stop set for my upkeep. We'll get it next turn. I think I hold back flunkies. Maybe set up some turn where I can go flunkies and ball lightning or something. It's gonna play steadfast guard. Makita kills his creatures too. It is wrath of God on on a spell shaper. So discard two cards, and his Steadfast card will die too. I guess that kind of allows him to start potentially attacking with Thermal Glider, but yeah, I like the part. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I played a land. I'm like, oh, I'll tap on my mana for Hammer. Oh, I just pay six to bring the Hammer back. It's fine. It's that good. He actually needs to use the Megita now, or I can hammer it. And I don't even know if he wants to use it. Like, I may just hammer him. Oh. That changes things. I did not think he was going to bring an Armageddon against me. Wow. <laughs> okay. Hammer burgered in. No longer the answer to all my problems. <laughs> wow. And a dust bowl. It's only it's non basics, right? Yeah. Oof. Maybe that last mountain I should have been playing around. I just feel like I wanted to get to eight mana where I can recurse hammer every single turn. Wow. Yeah, I have to trade. Crazy. Stupid upkeep. Stop, now you're just going to remind me of sadness. Armageddon. I knew that card was in the sideboard. Like I, I still have the picture of Kai Buddha on the cover of Sideboard Magazine with Gotterdammerung as the headline. Gotcha Damron being, of course, the German for Armageddon. Hmm. Was I supposed to play around that Armageddon? I could have held one mountain back. I mean, if I was living in desperate fear of Armageddon, I could, in theory, have had two mountains. Two mountains in my hand. Because <coughs> I could have uh, stopped at five, which is enough to recurse a hammer. But yeah, he basically caught me unprepared for his sideboard card. Which, fair enough. It's not working out. No idea why he would do that pre combat. This play becomes super easy. Now I draw all the burn spells. Wow. 
That's an interesting game. Puts me at eight. Three. Yeah, I can't block. Stupid Iron Claw Orcs text. Dead. <sighs> now I draw the Fire Blast. Like, if I respond to that Geddon with Fire Blast, Fire Blast, I win that game, right? <clears throat> I guess I'm supposed to play around Armageddon? I guess, I mean, look, if I hold one mountain back, I still lose that game. If I hold two mountains back, if I'd stopped at five, then I could actually hypothetically have won that game. I had a firestorm would have been good there at the end too. Yep. I wasn't winning that game. Even if Ironclaw had no text on I could block, I wasn't winning that game. I just feel I don't know. I just find it hilarious that Ironclaw Orcs made the top eight of worlds. You put it next to modern creatures like Siege Rhino or Tassiger or whatever. One game to save a spot in Standard Super League. The, the loser of this game, the loser of this match, gets relegated at 0-2. And this match comes down to this game. So one game apiece. Let me update the graphic. Effectively a promotion series game. The winner gets to keep a spot. Which is better, Monastery Mentor or Ironclaw Works? It's a fair question. White's supposed to get better small creatures, though, right? Which is better, Shivan Dragon or Monastery Mentor, right? <sighs> Draws fine. No sergeant. Which means we get to beat him up a little bit. Spend my mana on the king of all two drops. The Iron Claw Orc. Steadfast card. Interesting. Do I trade with Steadfast? Do I, do I incinerate? I don't think I want to use my incinerate. Because he's going to follow up with Lens I think the answer is Sandstalker. And then the only interesting question is whether or not I trade with Mog Fanatic. And I think I do. Because if he wants to block and kill Mog Fanatic, fine. I'll throw it at his head and I'll get through for six damage. Like, I don't think he's supposed to block Mog Fanatic, though, so I think I feel like I give him the ability to make a mistake. Uh, the mistake being not killing my Sandstalker. I mean, if he's got an Armageddon, then this is played better, but I feel like I effectively threw away a Mog Fanatic for five damage. Because I got the four from the Sandstalker through, and I, I have a future Sandstalker use. I mean, I don't know his hand. He's got a thermal glider or something, maybe his play's fine, but like if I don't attack with Mog Fanatic, then he probably trades with Sandstalker. I only deal two damage instead of dealing five. All right. We'll not be replaying Sandstalker this turn because we have more important things to do. Namely Incinerate Lens. Oh, I should have attacked before showing him that I have a curse scroll. But yeah, I'm kind of okay either way there. But the curse scroll is going to make him more likely to block, I think. So I should have attacked first. First strike? That's annoying. My curse scroll is not exactly turned on yet. Huh. So I could play flunkies. I think I play Flunkies. The other option is Hammer the Longbow Archer. 
but a hammer i can hammer better creatures and as soon as i draw a land and do a better job of unloading my hand i can probably i can probably curse scroll one bow archer so i'm gonna play the flunkies i don't love the inefficient use of my mana like i'm not using this third mana for anything but like if i get to attack with flunky stand stalker or similar that's really good A lot less likely to happen now. The ball lightning parallax wave interaction is so bad for me. Fine, he takes my ball lightning away. I'm going to get it back, right? I get it back on his turn, and then it dies at the beginning of the end step. So it just completely, completely turns off ball lightning. Very sad. Now, now if I hammer the longbow archer, did he forget to attack with longbow archer? He did. Or he chose not to attack with Longbow Archer. Huh. All right. Hammer your face. I've decided. I'm no longer interested in killing creatures with Parallax Wave in play. I'm going to wait out the Parallax Wave. Dream of maybe getting in a Ball Lightning or Sandstalker hit. But Fire Blast puts him at five. I mean, we're getting there. We're getting there. Mountain is a solid draw. <sighs> on the one hand, I would like to be able to play around Armageddon. On the other hand, I would like to turn on my Curse Scroll. I mean, I could take a one-third shot with a Curse Scroll. But I can also, um, if, if I play Sandstalker, he's going to remove the Sandstalker with the Parallax Wave, which brings this one turn closer to me being able to Ball Lightning him. Because I can't Ball Lightning him while Parallax Wave is out. So if I go land Sandstalker, he uses his Parallax Wave, and now my Curse Scroll is a lot closer. I don't feel like the 1 in 3 with the Curse Scroll is good enough. Especially when I want the parallax wave to go away so I can play ball lightning. I'm going to do it this way. I'm not convinced that's correct, but that's what I've done. Sans, there's only one Sandstalker in the, in the deck. The interaction with Curse Girl is not great. At some level, even having the Sandstalker under the Parallax Wave is also good for Curse Girl. But yeah, this, this is bad. These things happen. Damn yeah, it, my deck is not always mana hungry, but... It is when it's trying to play a Curse Scroll or Hammer of Ogredan game. Man, now he's going to put the Sandstalker back in my hand. Slidex going to get relegated. Rebels is going to hang out for another year, isn't it? There's nothing I can do. He's going to kill me. I mean, I guess I have a couple of draw steps, but I'm going to have to hit perfect, perfect. I'm not even convinced there are enough cards for me to draw. Armageddon. Sandstalker, Curse Scroll, certainly not a good combo here. Sandstalker, Curse Scroll, Hammer, Bogardin, Enemy, Armageddon. Pretty bad combo. <sighs> wow. Can't think of the card. I mean, I get one more draw phase. Oh, draw step, sorry. They were draw phases at the time. Now they're draw steps. I can't imagine what it would be. Yeah, I played land number four there because I I have to in order to actually win the game with this curse scroll, I have to get to the point where I can play a spell and then curse scroll. Like you want to set up a situation with curse scroll where you have one card in your hand, and so you're hitting 100 percent of the time. In addition, I wanted to get to five lands so that I could recurse this hammer. Basically, this was a game that I felt was impossible to win if he played Armageddon, so I just didn't play around Armageddon. 
like the cards that I have can only be operated efficiently if I have, you know, four or five land in play, really five, six land in play. So I just kind of mentally said to myself, you will not have Armageddon in this game. Wow. But he had Armageddon. Sideboard tech, two games. Nice, Armageddon's out of the sideboard, Shadow. Well, like, I feel like Curse Scroll and Hammerable Garden are really your keys to winning if we get to, like, my creatures are better than yours, so I just want to get my creatures out and then stop you from doing things. So yep. Armageddon's felt like, like, that's exactly what they're designed for. By the way, you didn't have to scoop that turn. You had one more turn. Um, but no, you probably, your upkeep. Upkeep. right, because you get back your Via Shino and he just sits there and I don't attack into you. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the least, no. Yeah, he goes back to my hand at the end step. And... Right, right, and then you're back to where you were, and I actually play Lin Civi that turn, so yeah, no, it's it's over. Wow, so the Rebel deck is, the Rebel deck, the Rebel deck hangs out for another it's year. The, it's the little deck that could, man. It really is the little deck that could. It felt like that last year when it managed to play off, it managed to beat Affinity and make the playoffs. May not have been the most well-played Affinity match. No, no, Affinity that was, matches. right, no, that was, that was me shaking off the rust with Affinity. That was terrible. The mistakes were made in that mistakes particular were made. game. But mistakes. If you just beat the slide deck that I thought was advantage, and then I won game one, felt like relatively easily. The Armageddon's were absolutely crucial. I think you had the matchup nailed where you have to prevent me from doing the kind of recursive damage that I can get with a hammer or a curse scroll. Right, and like you can just burn me out if you just wait. So if I right. say, oh, you see your handful of burn? Well, you get to play Fire Blast now, but nothing else comes. Right, so... Well played. And you played a lot of land that first game. I guess it was because Hammer Bogarden was in your, your yard. You played a yeah, sixth land. Well, I, I didn't think you'd play that sixth land. I figured you, you assumed that I would have Armageddon. In the, in the second game, I, I wasn't actively thinking about Armageddon um, as a card that I needed to worry about in the matchup. Just because it's, but mostly it was the Hammer Bogarden. I wanted to get to eight where I could both recurse the hammer and play it. Now, mm -hmm. if I'm actively thinking about the existence of the card Armageddon, I probably should stop at five. Right, I probably should have right. stopped at five mana. I but the thing is, even if I have two mans at two lands in my hand, the way mm -hmm. that Armageddon played out, I don't think it would have mattered. I think I would have lost that second game anyway. Sure. I had assumed that I telegraphed Armageddon when instead of keeping back my dude with Magita or Magita, yeah. uh I played him, right? Like I'm, I'm basically I'm just getting dudes into play. So I assumed funny. at that point it was uh and like you missed a turn to pick up your Bogarden for well, some that reason. Was, I just, that was a misclick. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, just like here, you got one extra turn because I forgot to attack with my 2-2 guy. Like, I don't know whether I thought your 3-3 Mog Flunky, which I'd known can't attack or block, was going to block. Because I'm obviously not sitting back for, like, Ball Lightning. Like, you're not going right. to throw that into my uh, Parallax Wave. Right. So, yeah, I just forgot to turn him sideways one turn. So I'm glad that didn't come back and bite me. Yeah, no, I did play the fourth land. In, in game three, I obviously you just destroyed me with Armageddon. But I, again, had a hammer in my graveyard, and I had a Curse Scroll in play. And I felt like I can't actually win this game with less than five mana. I just have to hope he doesn't have the get in this time around, was my thinking. Sure. Yeah, I was going to, like, I ultimately, I don't even think I plan on activating to get it. Like, he was just a 3-3 body, which I felt like I could use more of. Worked out. Good yeah. game. Good games.